Genius here after their big fight yesterday. Oh. Debo out of the game and into the podcast game in an episode of Cleats and Convos. Is that what also, it's Yeah, it's also named my favorite martini bar downtown. <laughs> he put a ticking clock on the 49ers Super Bowl window. Take a listen. I'm looking at it like you just said for us hungry. I'm full at this point. Like, <laughs> I'm full at this point. Like, I mean, it's time, it's time to it's time to really clean the plate. Like, it's either it's either now or never. Like, right. that's how I kind of look at it. Like, with, with the guys that we have, like we didn't like I've been a part of, you know, the, the best team in the NFL for the past going on six years. Yeah. And so like we always there, like we 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 got to get it done. On the board too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was agreeing. What? She's the host. She's like, yeah. you can't just come in yeah. and be like, yeah. stop, bring out the board. Uh, uh, It'd be ahead. great if the I, board I went to other the programs. Board. I think she should be on the board. All right, so you want my reaction, Wiles? Sure, yes. All right, it's two multifold. One is, oddly, bad news for Rashad McCants and the Hawk Tua girl because we have a new number one pick for the worst podcast I've ever heard draft. I mean, I mean and, and a number one pick of maybe there's too many of these. You know what I mean? Maybe, 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 maybe a little saturated. Coach, I think Brandon Ayuk agrees too. with me. You watch this thing? He's on his phone. Like, yeah, how, much, how really long do I have to be here? <laughs> but, uh, but yes, of course, bring the board. Because, Brew, this is a little bit like James Harden in 2019 being like, man, my Rockets been the best team the last five years. Well, yeah, maybe you would have been if not for the fact that you're in the midst of a dynasty who keeps beating you specifically. So, yes, of course, this has to go on the regular season portion of the board, which is getting more and more populated as the season goes on. A lot of players from teams the Chiefs beat. My mic back's falling, so hopefully my I stay on the air here. There we go. Um. Also, by the way, Coach, and Coach, but it's great to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. The internet's worried we're mad at each other. Um, Nothing but love. Uh, Debo, here's the other thing. You might have been the team to beat the last six years yeah. if when you played the Chiefs, you were better. Like, th Ooh. those were typically close games. The Super Bowls were. The regular season one wasn't. And you've been fine. I mean, you're yet to score Jeez, This a guy's touchdown. just trying to do cleats and combos. Okay, well, now don't say don't. Listen, man, there. I'm sorry. As the media ombudsman, Wilds, once you step outside of the lines and into the now media, I have to ombud your comments, <laughs> and this is a terrible take. So that's that's my reaction. Okay. Okay. Can, uh, let me quit. You're obviously the Chiefs have been the best team in the think? last six years. But let me just defend Debo a little bit. I think, Coach, you understand. One, he refuses to kiss the ring. Which I respect. If you're going to ever have beat the Chiefs, you can't be kissing the ring. I'm not asking you to kiss the All ring. All right, so you can't be like, oh, they've been there. But don't who's pretend the Mahomes ring doesn't exist. So I'm, I'm with that. The, I like the attitude. Okay. Secondly, 2019, he's thinking we're up by 10 with seven minutes left. Yeah, make a play. We were the better team. We should have won. Last year, he's thinking we're up by three until the last play of the game. We were the better team. We should have won. He's wrong, but I get his mentality. All right, that's not bad. I, I think I need to start like a, a Micah's Mountain or something for podcast <laughs> by athlete and just rank him every week because this, look, they didn't have the better team. He doesn't have the better podcast that, than, than Micah. And, and like that, that's the reality of it. And, and at some point, someone's got to explain to these guys po podcasting isn't for everybody. You know, like, <laughs> Thank you. Come on, like it's, it's, it's just not. I agree with and, that. And look, I, and I'm not you saying that. I'm on it's great if you want to explore other opportunities, but it, it's just not for everybody. And when you do, when you do things like this and and create create board material and you talk about all the, the the things that could have happened and should have happened, look, San Francisco's been to the the Super Bowl, the NFC Championship, four out of the last five years. So there's a lot of times they had opportunities to to win and they didn't. And at the end of the day, the best team ended up ended up winning that year. In terms of whether or not this is the year. Yeah, they have another great opportunity this year. I think they'll be in a pretty good position next year to win it too, even with the salary cap the way it's positioned. They still just really have to do Brock Purdy. They've got everybody else pretty much under contract. Ooh. There won't be a lot of there won't be a lot of wiggle room. Based off of what I was looking at today from the cap perspective, there won't be a lot of wiggle room with Brock Some Purdy's room. contract. But they have all the core guys under contract. Well, they have the, all their core offensive guys under contract. We can show you their pending, their, their pending free agents. Look at this crap. It's 
It's the defense. Dre Greenlaw, and I understand, listen, Greenlaw and Hafanga are injured right now, but those are excellent players. Yeah. Every one of those guys is a starter, and every one of them except for Aaron Banks is a defensive player. So basically your entire secondary has to be rebuilt. You're right, Coach, that they're all pro guys, except for Mooney Ward, are all under contract, but that's your whole second, your whole back end, and that to me is it. What? And I think Debo also knows. Well, maybe it might, might not be now or never for the team, but it might be for me being on the yeah. team because they just signed Ayuk. Yeah, I just the core group of explosive offensive players. Those guys are all are still yes. there, which should make them contenders. Right. And I understand there's going to be a drop off with some of the, with some of those guys. And this is a great window, but they've had a lot of great windows up to this point. You know, and they've come very close. They just haven't been able to to get over the hump. And I got to say, you guys, I agree with you on the personnel. I'm the arbiter of funk. All right. And I, and I really think <laughs> that being, quite a title. being close six years straight and not getting over that hump, that can throw you into an emotional funk. I really do think if they if they get close this year, conference championship, maybe the Super Bowl and lose again, I actually think while you keep you're still going to have a lot of your great players. I actually think it'll be time to not rebuild, but reload, restock. Because I just think mentally and emotionally, guys are going to be like, like Debo, you can see. He's rushed. He's like, like the Bills six years. Well, well yeah. I was about to say, if they, the they start interrupting, yeah, if they, if they like make the, the Super Bowl and lose this year, they, they are the modern day Bills. The bill. Oh, oh I, you got I, no, old school you bills. Those. Either well, one, so though, think about I mean, it. The old school bills went to four straight Super Bowls, lost yeah. them all, obviously, in a four-year stretch. This would be a six-year stretch Three where you Super go to Bowls. five NFC Championship games in six years and go to four Super. I'm sorry, three Super Bowls and lose all three. That's it's not apples to apples, but it's. It's I, very, I, that's very gotta close. That's got to be hard to come back from when yeah, you keep lot, getting close. It's a lot worse to come back from being lousy <laughs> for, yeah. for all those years. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and if they answer the Brock Purdy question, if Brock Purdy comes out and establishes himself as a legitimate young star then they'll be that fine. everybody can agree upon, then they're going to be fine for a lot of years to come. No, I think they'll still be contenders, but I just think they're going to need to get well, some new blood. Usually in what teams do different. in that spot is Add change it. the coach. But they're not, that would, they would be insane to do, in my opinion, insane to do that. I think Shanahan's brilliant. I know Wilds, oddly, is skeptical of him. But I think he's brilliant. No, I think so he has big game the, is the question. I think he's brilliant, too. I mean, he's gotten to Super Bowl with, you know, <clears throat> Jimmy Garoppolo and the last pick of the draft. He's pretty good. <laughs> okay. He's pretty good. Uh, quickly, 49ers uh, versus the injury-depleted Rams. San Francisco seven-point favorites. This one is uh, also on Fox. Uh, career head-to-head, -head, uh, Shanahan, Roland, McVay. Any chance the 49ers are an upset, they alert and tread carefully because, Brew, you said to Greg Jennings' face there was no chance they were an upset alert last week, and then next thing you know, Sam Darnold did his thing. So, no chance. Um, I wish you did Greg this, you did this last week. Say it to his face. No chance. You mentioned Sh Shanahan's beaten McVay nine out of the last ten regular season games, and the one they lost was last year, week 18, Carson Wentz. And Sam Darnold with the quarterbacks. They sat their starters, both teams. So that's irrelevant. And then with the Rams being so beaten up, San Francisco's coming off a bad loss in their minds, a terrible loss. We should have beat this team. They're going to want to reestablish themselves. So I, I don't think. I think Ayuk replaces Debo's production. He's been pretty much the invisible man. Pull up the quickly where they, where they uh, land statistically. I mean, offensively, this is where San Francisco is. This is where LA is. They're both dealing with injuries. Except IU can can pick up the yeah. slack that that he they're gonna lose with Debo. I mean, it, and let's just say let's say the Niners' offense is totally stymied, which I don't think it will be. Mm -hmm. I just think the Rams the Rams are down four starters on their offensive line, and this Niners' defensive front, while I don't think is the best in the league. Nicky Bosa, when healthy, is exceptional. Hargrave is good. They have really good players, and I just don't think the Rams can block them. Listen, going into the year, the Rams, I had the Rams in the NFC Championship oh, game. So I think they have talent, but you're without, they're without their two best weapons on offense, their entire offensive line. I just don't know how they can move the ball. And Stafford hasn't been the same these two weeks without the Avengers. This, he doesn't have Avengers, bro. <laughs> no, Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. 
it sounds this is going to sound strange. They don't even know how to lose. They, it, it's almost like a team figures something out, exploits it, and they get they rolled, fight. which is what happened against the Packers, which is what happened against the Saints. It's what's going to happen against the Ravens. So why? Hold on. So here's my question. I, I don't dispute that either. Yeah. Why is it going to happen against the Ravens? What? I know why yeah. it happened. The, because the, the, I mean, this is your own stat that you put up, and I was like, wow. And then I just said, Josh, yeah. 